Now that you understand a little bit more about formal charges, we're going to take a look at some other molecules and see how we can draw their structures a little bit more accurately. What we're talking about today are something called extended and incomplete octets. Our learning objectives for this video are as follows. So if you need to go ahead and write those down, go ahead, pause the video, and then come back when you're ready. So we're going to take a look at a molecule of SO2, which if you remember, we've drawn SO2 uh, as follows. And if you're not sure where this structure is coming from, I suggest you go back and review your Lewis rules and practice drawing your structures so that you can draw the structure for SO2 pretty quickly like this. Now, uh, what I want to take a look at now is uh, our formal charges, because we remember that formal charges can tell us whether or not we have uh, a viable structure for this molecule. If I do my formal charge for this oxygen right out here on the end, we have 6 minus 6 plus half of 2. 6 minus 7 is minus 1. So the formal charge on this oxygen is minus 1. If I do the formal charge for this oxygen here, I have 6 minus 4 plus half of 4, 6 minus 6. So that one's a 0. And it's the central sulfur that I want to be careful of. Okay. If I do the formal charge for the central sulfur, I have 6 minus 2 plus half of 6. 6 minus 2 plus 3. 6 minus 5 is plus 1. Now that's a problem because one of our rules for formal charge is that the central atom should be, if possible, 0 or negative for its formal charge. Now, according to the Lewis rules, we don't have anything we can do with this molecule to fix that. And so up until this point, we might have just said, well, that's the best I can do because every atom has 8 valence electrons. We've used all of the electrons in this molecule, all 18 of them. There's nothing I can do because if I start shifting electrons around, uh, it's going to mess up the octet for one of these atoms. Well, it turns out that we have a little bit of leeway here when it comes to elements like sulfur. Elements like sulfur that are in the third period of the periodic table or below have the ability to break the octet rule they can extend their octets. When I say they can extend their octets, what I mean is that sulfur is perfectly happy having more than eight valence electrons around it. And the reason for that is because starting at the third period, those elements have some empty d orbitals that they can use. They can kind of shuffle electrons into those d orbitals and actually uh, allow for more than eight. Remember, before the third period, we don't have d electrons, and so all we have are s and p electrons, and the total number of electrons that can fill that is eight. But once you get the d orbitals involved, well, now you've got a whole bunch more places to put electrons. So it turns out that we can actually go ahead and we can increase the bonding order to sulfur. We can increase the number of electrons around sulfur. If I do that, I can change the formal charge. And remember, the ideal is zero or negative for the central atom. The other thing I'd like to do is to fix this one, too, if possible. Negative one, now it's not the worst possible thing. Oxygen is OK. It's electronegative. It's allowed to have a negative formal charge. But I would like to be that, make that zero if I can. And it turns out that I can do this if I make an additional bond from oxygen to sulfur. So I take one of the pairs of electrons from that oxygen, and I make an additional bond to sulfur. And when I do that, that is going to change. Let's put those electrons back in. That's going to change my formal charges for these two. So going back to this oxygen now, it was a minus 1, but now it's 6 minus 4 plus half of 4. 6 minus 4 plus 2, 6 minus 6. Now it's a 0. The sulfur now has 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 electrons around it. That's way more than 8. Well, it's 2 more than 8. That shouldn't be allowed. But because sulfur is in the third period, it can have more than 8 valence electrons. It is perfectly fine having 10. I calculate the formal charge the same way. Sulfur normally has 6. From that 6, I subtract 2 in lone pairs plus half of 2, 4, 6, 8 electrons that are shared. Well, half of 8 is 4. 4 and 2 is 6. 6 minus 6 is 0. And so what I've got here is a much better structure for SO2 because it contains zero formal charges. Now, yes, sulfur doesn't have eight valence electrons. It has more, but that's okay. 
it's perfectly fine for sulfur to have more than, than eight. If I were to do this with the sulfate ion, now previously when we've drawn the structure for sulfate, we've done it like this. And again, if you don't see where this is coming from, or you don't understand how I've got this structure here, go back and review your Lewis structures. But this was the way that we had done the structure for sulfate. And if we want to be correct about it, we'll have to put our brackets in and our charge. And if we go ahead and calculate the formal charges of this, these elements, all of the oxygens are exactly the same and they're all minus one. Go ahead and figure that out on your own if you're not sure. All of the oxygens have a minus one formal charge, which means that the sulfur in the center has to be plus two in order for the sum of them to equal the charge on the molecule or on the ion. So sulfur has to be plus two and you can calculate yourself six minus zero plus half of eight is plus two. Uh, we don't like that, that's bad. Sulfur is in the middle, it should have a zero or negative. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to extend sulfur's octet by creating some additional bonds to sulfur. And here's the only thing that you have to consider when doing this. You can only create a maximum of two additional bonds when you do this type of, of extension. So I'm going to create two double bonds to sulfur. That's the most I'm allowed to do. I can't do any more than that even if I wanted to. But when I do that, I've changed now the formal charges of those two oxygens and the sulfur in the middle. These two oxygens, now if you start to recognize an oxygen with two bonds and two lone pairs, uh, has a formal charge now of zero. So that's our formal charge for the oxygen. Zero. And this one down here is the same, two bonds and two lone pairs. The sulfur in the middle now, let's calculate sulfur's uh, formal charge. Sulfur normally has six. There are no lone pairs. Sulfur is sharing two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. So half of twelve. Half of twelve is six. Six minus six is zero. So this is a much more stable and viable structure for the sulfate ion, and it requires that sulfur have more than eight valence electrons. This allows us to draw structures for molecules that we might have had trouble with before. Things like PCL5. PCL5, total number of electrons, 5 times 7 is 35, plus phosphorus is 5 is 40, phosphorus in the center of 5 chlorines. Phosphorus is in the third period or below, so phosphorus can extend its octet. Phosphorus right now has 10 valence electrons, and that's okay. And I've just used 10, so I've got 30 left, so there's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, and 30. There's your structure. The formal charges of the chlorines are all zero. You can calculate those for yourself. And the formal charge of the phosphorus is also zero. Five minus zero plus half of 10. Again, you can calculate the formal charges and prove it to yourself. So it is possible now to create structures with more than eight valence electrons on the central atom, as long as the central atom is in the third period or below. The other thing that we can do, for example, with a molecule like BH3, boron trihydride. Now boron has three electrons plus the one each from the hydrogens. So that's a total of six electrons that we have to place. Boron in the middle of the three hydrogens, because it has to be in the center, hydrogens can't be. I've just used all six electrons. I have no more electrons to place, and I have boron with only six electrons. This is called an incomplete octet or open sextet. Six electrons, sextet. If I do my formal charges for these atoms, you'll see the hydrogens are all zero because one electron uh, can only form one bond, so they're all zero, and so is the boron. Three minus zero plus half of six. So all four of these atoms now have a formal charge of zero, which means this structure is perfectly stable. Now it gives it some interesting chemical properties, but for now we don't need to worry about that. So that's called an open sextet or an incomplete octet.
And we see several molecules that will do this, uh, that will have an open sextet. So usually, when you draw a structure, you want to make sure that you calculate the formal charges and use those to determine whether or not your structure is, is the best. So give it a try. Try a few, and, uh, and good luck.